When it comes to exercise, small changes in technique can make huge differences in whether an exercise is effective, ineffective, harmful, or possibly even a totally different exercise. In this video, I'll give you four examples of that, one lower body stretch and one lower body strengthening exercise, and one upper body stretch and one upper body strengthening exercise. So let's get started. The first exercise is going to be a hip flexor stretch. And to do this in a standing position, you stand with your feet staggered, and this is the hip that we're going to be stretching. Now, to do this, you just roll your pelvis under like this so you have a nice flat back, and then push your hips forwards that way. You should feel a stretch right here. Now, you may notice that this looks remarkably similar to a calf stretch where you're stretching your calf muscles back there. And oftentimes when I show patients a hip flexor stretch, they'll say, I don't feel anything right here, but I feel it back here. And the reason is if your calves limit you from moving forward before the stiffness in your hip flexors limit you from moving forward, then you'll feel the stretch in your calf. So if your calves are stiffer, but you want to stretch your hip flexor, one way you can do that is just by lifting your heel up. So with a calf stretch, you want your heel down on the floor so that you're stretching the calves. But with a hip flexor stretch, that's not all that important because you don't really care about that calves. So you just push your hips forward like this, allow the heel to rise up as much as you need to in order to feel the stretch right here. Now you can actually do this exercise where you get a stretch in both muscles at the same time. To do that, you'll step into a calf stretch just until you feel a stretch in the back of the calf. And then from here, you have to kind of roll your pelvis underneath and push your hips forward while keeping your heel down on the floor. This really involves a lot of glute and abdominal work, and you don't want to allow your lower back to arch like that. So you have to push your heel down, squeeze the glute, push the hip forwards, and most people will feel it more in one or the other, depending on which one's limiting it. So take home point, if your intent is to stretch your calves, keep the heel on the floor and go forwards. If your intent is to stretch the hip flexors, allow your heel to come up and push until you feel a really good stretch in the front of the hip. Now some other technique pointers with these exercises is that the hip flexor stretch is often done to help people with lower back pain, particularly things like degenerative disc disease or spinal stenosis, where standing in an anterior pelvic tilt like this due to tight hip flexors is painful. And when you're doing this exercise, you want to be careful that you're not causing that extension. If you're allowing your lower back to extend, at best, you're probably not doing the exercise as effectively, and you certainly don't feel it in the hip flexor as much as if you keep more of a neutral spine like this. But I also have times when people say, oh, I feel it in the back of my leg there, which probably means that you're pinching up the nerve roots that make up your sciatic nerve. So avoid feeling it in the back of the leg because that's really not what you're stretching. Now with the calf stretch, there's another technique pointer that people often make mistakes with. And that's that the calf stretch is often done to allow you to step through without having to pronate or flatten your foot. But when many people do the calf stretch, they turn their toes of the back foot out and allow their foot to pronate or flatten like that, which is the thing that you're trying to prevent in the first place. To see it facing a wall, people will turn the toes out that way, and that allows them to go around the ankle instead of directly over top of it. Now, if you look at this foot, to prevent your foot from flattening or pronating, sometimes it helps to scoop the ground like this with your toes and then step forward, again, keeping the heel on the floor. Now you'll notice you probably can't stretch as far like this as you'd be able to if you did allow yourself to pronate. And that's okay if you don't get as far because you're getting a more effective stretch, even though technically you're moving a little bit less. So that was the first exercise. Now on to the strengthening exercise for the lower body. And that's a squat. If you watch this channel regularly, you know squats are absolutely one of my favorite exercises 
and for good reasons. They're very functional. They help with picking things up off the floor, getting up from a chair or a toilet, but they also work a lot of different muscle groups, particularly your glutes and your quads. But how you do the squat can impact which muscle group you're emphasizing. If you squat with your weight more forwards on your toes like that, that emphasizes your quadriceps more. If you sit back more with your weight on your heels and your bottom stuck out a little bit, which does require you to lean forwards a little bit as well, that shifts the emphasis to your glutes. Now, neither one is overtly wrong, but if your intent is to strengthen one or the other, pick the one that works best for you. If you happen to have knee pain, it may also be more uncomfortable with the weight more on your toes because as you put the weight more on your toes and activate your quadriceps more, that compresses your kneecap up against your thigh bone. And that can be particularly uncomfortable for people with patellofemoral pain syndrome or kneecap arthritis. Conversely, sitting back may feel a little bit more comfortable. Now, for some people who have lower back pain, this will also feel a little bit better versus having a relatively more upright trunk position. But for other people with lower back pain, such as a typical acute herniated disc, it may feel a little bit more uncomfortable to be in that position. So in that case, you may benefit from having a slightly more upright trunk position, knees going more over toes like that. So again, neither one is wrong. It just depends on which one is best for your particular situation. So those were the lower body exercises. Real quick, if you did find those helpful, hit the like button below this video and share it to your Facebook page. That helps the video reach more people, which in turn helps me to continue to be able to provide you with free, valuable information. Thanks so much for doing that. Let's get on to the upper body exercises. Now the upper body stretch is the chest stretch or the doorway stretch. You may also hear this referred to as the corner stretch because you can do the same thing in a corner with your arms up on the wall like this. But the intent of the stretch is to stretch out the chest muscles, both the pectoralis major, your bigger chest muscle, which attaches from your sternum, rib cage, and collarbone into your arm. The pec minor attaches from your sternum into a hook on your shoulder blade. And most people, when they're doing this for shoulder pain, it's actually more the pec minor that they're interested in stretching. Now, when most people do this, they'll put their arms up on the wall and really, really lean into the doorway as far as they can. And that does give you a slightly greater stretch on your pectoralis major, as you go further and further into the doorway. But when you bring your elbow back like this, it also causes the ball of the shoulder to glide forwards in the socket, which can pinch your rotator cuff tendons and actually make shoulder pain worse. But again, the intent is usually more to prevent that forward tipped posture of the shoulders, which has more to do with the pectoralis minor, which does not cross the shoulder joint itself. So all you really need is to keep the shoulder blades back. And to do that, when you're stretching, you don't need to lean in really far with your body like that. You just have to think about keeping your shoulder blades tipped backwards, shoulders pulled back this way, and then arms up like that. And that way you don't have to lean in quite so far into the stretch in order to get a good effect from it. Now, if you have lower back pain, another problem with leaning too far in is that can create some pain in your lower back. But if you do just a slight stretch where you put your arms up like this, pull your shoulder blades down and back, and then just slightly walk in this way, that still gives you an effective stretch across your chest muscles without arching your lower back excessively. Furthermore, if you're leaning on the doorway like this, your chest muscles, your pectoralis major, is pushing to keep you from falling forwards. And if the muscle is contracting or shortening, you can't also be stretching it effectively at the same time. So for that reason, just put your arms up on the doorway or on the wall, stagger your feet a little bit so it takes the stress off your lower back and you're not so much in spinal extension, and then just take small steps inwards 
pulling your shoulder blades together, down and back like that, shoulder external rotation, and keeping your spine neutral. If it hurts your shoulders too much to have your arms up high, you can also do this with your arms down relatively lower and you still get an effective stretch of your chest muscles. Now the upper body strengthening exercise is a push-up. And push-ups, much like squats, are a compound exercise that works multiple different muscle groups, particularly your chest muscles, your shoulder muscles, and your tricep muscles. But also like the squat, the technique that you use varies what's going to get the most emphasis. If you have a wide grip on your push-up, like this, where you're pressing out and there's more of a shoulder horizontal adduction movement, then that is going to emphasize the chest muscles more. If your arms are a little bit closer to your sides and you're pressing out more with your elbows, giving more elbow movement, that's going to emphasize your triceps a little bit more. So again, neither one is wrong, but it depends on your intent, especially if you have shoulder pain. If you have shoulder pain, the more outwards your elbows go, that puts you into more of an internally rotated position with your shoulders and can pinch the rotator cuff tendons more. Conversely, if you keep your elbows pinched in a little bit when doing a push-up, that externally rotates your shoulders and can make it feel a little bit more comfortable. Now, most people for a normal push-up are going to be somewhere between out straight to the side and right here, if you want to kind of balance the chest and triceps emphasis. So I'll show you just an example of each of them. With the typical push-up, you're going to come down like this, and you want elbows not quite right out to the sides like that, also not down this way, but about midway between where they're coming back at sort of a 45 degree angle to your body. Now, if you want a greater chest emphasis, you can spread your arms, bring the arms more like they're coming straight across, and this emphasizes your chest a little bit more. Or if you wanted to emphasize your triceps a little bit more, you'd bring your hands a little bit narrower, pinch the elbows into your sides, and it's almost like a tricep push down at this point, where you're just going back and forth using primarily the elbows. Those were just four examples of the principle of how small changes in exercise technique can make a dramatic difference in the effect of the exercise. And if you're subscribed to this channel or you watch it regularly, you'll know I'm a stickler for exercise technique in all of my videos. Because if you're going to take the time to do an exercise at all, you may as well do it in the way that's most beneficial for the problem that you're dealing with. Now, this video only covered lower body and upper body exercises. But you also might want to learn technique tips for spinal exercises. And I've got tips for both neck pain and back pain that you can check out in these videos over here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.